Hello, today we will see how you can use Generative AI tools to automatically create an engaging podcast on a specific topic. Google's Notebook LM just added this functionality, which I will demonstrate. Imagine that you would like to create a podcast on a topic to give your students an overview on that specific topic. I will use the example of a recent paper that I co-authored in Medical Teacher. The paper discusses the concept of illusion of explanatory depth and how to use iterative prompting when using generative AI to ensure that our students and we don't become dependent on AI and continue to develop our critical thinking and problem-solving skills. To begin, you would collect the PDF of the paper and the references that are cited in the paper. The plan is to use these as sources for the AI to generate a podcast. Next, you go to Notebook LM and add the PDFs of the paper and the references in the left column. You click on the Notebook Guide at the bottom right and it will give you an opportunity to generate an audio overview. In a few moments, depending on the size of the manuscript, your podcast will be ready. At that point, you would click on Load to listen. Error confidently explained something, uh, only to realize like halfway through that you actually have any no idea what you're talking about. Happens to the best of us. Right. Turns out there's a name for that awkward feeling the illusion of explanatory depth. And you know what? It's messing with all of us way more than we realize. It really is pervasive. Lucky for you, you've sent us some fascinating sources to unpack all this, so let's dive in. And it's not just about avoiding those awkward conversational moments either. This illusion has some pretty big implications, especially now with AI tools like ChatGPT suddenly everywhere. Exactly. Speaking of AI, the first paper you sent us, hot off the press from a medical teacher, dives right into how this illusion pops up in medical education with, you guessed it, AI in the mix. Timely, for sure. And let me tell you, the timing couldn't be more relevant. Absolutely. Metha and Metha, the authors, argue that this AI boom actually gives us a unique opportunity to use the illusion of explanatory depth to our advantage. But to do that, we need to understand why our brains tend to overestimate what we know. Okay, so let's break it down. What exactly is the illusion of explanatory depth? Think of it this way. Imagine you're chatting with someone about something you think you've got a handle on, like uh, lunar eclipses, right? Earth's shadow, the moon, boom, eclipse. Sounds simple enough, but then someone throws a curveball question, something like, how is that different from the phases of the moon? And suddenly you realize you can't quite connect all the dots. Oof, I felt that. And you know, it's funny you use that example because Metha and Metha actually describe a similar scenario in the article. A father thinks he's explaining a lunar eclipse perfectly to his daughter. Then she asks one question, and bam. He realizes his knowledge has some, shall we say, serious gaps. Exactly, and that's the illusion being exposed. We mistake familiarity for true understanding. In everyday life, those gaps might just lead to some blushing. But in fields like medicine, the stakes are much higher. Imagine a doctor relying solely on an AI diagnosis without truly understanding the reasoning behind it. Yeah, that's where things get a bit concerning. To say the least. That's a great point. And it makes you think if even doctors with years of training can fall prey to this illusion, then what hope do the rest of us have? So how do we fight back against this illusion, this like tendency to overestimate our understanding? Especially now that we have these AI tools like ChatGPT, which, let's be honest, can be pretty tempting to just rely on. It's true, those AI tools can feel like a shortcut to knowledge, but the key here, as Metha and Metha point out, is to use them actively, not passively. They suggest a strategy called iterative prompting. Okay, iterative prompting sounds a bit like a, I don't know, robotic tongue twister or something. Break it down for us, what does that actually mean? Essentially, it's about asking increasingly challenging questions. And not just of the AI, but of yourself as well. So instead of just accepting that first answer chat GPT spits out, you keep, keep digging, digging deeper. deeper. You're, You're pushing, pushing for more nuanced, nuanced explanations, identifying, identifying limits of both the AI's knowledge and, crucially, your own. 
So it's like, like turning, turning the tables, tables giving ChatGPT the, the interrogation line of treatment. Exactly. I'm into it. And in doing so, you're engaging in a much more active learning process. You're no longer just absorbing information. You're actively testing and refining your understanding. That, that makes, makes a lot of sense. sense. It's, it's like, like that old saying, the more you learn, the more you realize, realize you don't know. know. Okay. And, and speaking of realizing you don't know, that brings us to our next piece of evidence, in this case, against, against our, our own brains. brains. The, the Science of Psychology, by Lawson. Now, now before, before you picture us all decked out in spandex, this, this study is actually about how badly people draw bicycles. Yes. And as amusing as that sounds, the findings are actually quite revealing when it comes to the illusion of explanatory depth. Lawson found, found that even something as seemingly simple and familiar as a bicycle, an object we see and interact with regularly, proves surprisingly difficult to draw accurately from memory. Wait, seriously? Oh, yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty confident, confident I could sketch out a passable bike right now. Two wheels, handlebars, pedals. What's so hard about that? I encourage you to try it after this. You might be surprised. Lawson's studies show that the majority of people make significant errors in their drawings. Misplacing pedals incorrectly connecting the frame to the wheels, details we gloss over in our mental models, but are absolutely crucial to a bike's actual functionality. Okay, I'm starting to see where this is going. So we think we understand how bikes work, because we've seen them, ridden them maybe, but when it comes to actually like representing that knowledge concretely, yeah. the illusion crumbles. Exactly. We mistake familiarity and exposure for genuine understanding. Our brains rely on these mental shortcuts, these simplified models of how things work, which you know function well enough for basic interactions, but they fall apart when we try to really delve deeper. So we've got AI potentially making us overconfident, our bicycles betraying us. Where does our third source fit into all of this? This one seems to take things to a whole other level. You're right, this last paper, Broad Effects of Shallow Understanding, by Myers and his colleagues, adds another fascinating layer to this whole phenomenon. They propose something called the breadth principle. And this is where it gets really mind-bending. This paper argues that struggling to explain one thing, like how a zipper works, can actually make you realize, you know, all less about something completely unrelated, like how snow forms. That's the gist of it, yes. Essentially, they found that the act of struggling to explain something, of really grappling with its complexities and encountering the gaps in your knowledge, seems to trigger a kind of metacognitive domino effect. You begin to question your understanding in other areas, even seemingly unrelated ones. So it's like that feeling when, I don't know, you realize you've been wearing your shirt inside out all day, and suddenly you start questioning everything you thought you knew about getting dressed, maybe even like your general competence in life. That's a very relatable way to put it. And while it might sound a bit disconcerting, Myers and his colleagues argue that this breadth principle, this ripple effect of self-doubt, is actually a good thing. It's a sign of intellectual humility and awareness of the vastness of knowledge and the limitations of our own understanding. So after all of that AI throwing us curveballs, our bicycles betraying us, zippers making us question snow, what does it all mean for, you know, the person listening right now? They've sent us these sources. They're clearly intrigued by this whole illusion thing. But what's the real takeaway? What do we do with this newfound knowledge? Well, I think the most crucial takeaway here is to approach our own knowledge with, like, a healthy dose of skepticism. Don't just assume you understand something because it's familiar or you've encountered it before. We all fall prey to this illusion. It's part of how our brains work. But we can be more mindful of it. It's like we need to actively be on the lookout for those moments where, I don't know, maybe we're bluffing our way through an explanation or relying on a mental shortcut that might not actually hold up if someone really grilled us on it. Exactly. And that's where the real learning begins, right? When we push past that initial feeling of, okay, yeah, I've got this, and really challenge our own understanding. So that bicycle you think you could draw perfectly, try it. You might be surprised. Yeah, or that news article you just skimmed. See, See if you, you can, can actually explain the main points to a friend without having to look back at it. And I bet if, if most of us are being honest with ourselves, we'd be surprised by how often we stumble. I know I would be. Absolutely. But here's the exciting part. Every time we expose the illusion, every time we identify a gap in our knowledge, it's not about feeling embarrassed or inadequate. It's a golden opportunity, a chance to actually learn something new, to refine our understanding, to, like, Fill in those blank spaces on the canvas of our knowledge. I love that analogy. It's like we all carry around these connect the dots pictures in our heads thinking we've got the whole image figured out. But it's only when we're willing to really examine those dots and maybe even add a few more of our own that the true picture starts to emerge. 
And, and that, that I think is what makes these deep dives so rewarding. You know, yeah. we're all on this journey of discovery together. together. And, and sometimes the most surprising discoveries happen right inside our own heads. Well said. So to everyone listening, keep asking those questions. Keep challenging those assumptions you have, even about things you think you've got down pat. And keep exploring the world with that sense of curiosity and that intellectual humility. There's always more to learn. And that's what makes this whole journey so fascinating, really. Could agree more. And on that note, I think I'm going to go attempt to draw a bicycle. Who knows? Maybe I'll surprise myself. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. And we'll see you next time for another adventure in knowledge. Ever confidently explain?